Okay, so for trigonometry, we have a variety of questions. Just so you know, this review video will capture unit 7 and 8 all in one, so trigonometry as a whole. First type of question you might see is to determine the values of six trigonometric ratios for any positive or negative angle. So uh, one thing that's really important, at the beginning of your test, I would recommend drawing out the three special triangles or that unit circle. Okay, that's going to help you find the exact value of trig ratios, and that's going to be useful for a variety of questions. Okay, um, also how to use your calculator to approximate the primary trig ratios and determine the reciprocal trig ratios. So number one, determine the exact value of all trig ratios for the angle 330 degrees. So what you want to do is first figure out where does 330 degrees terminate? Well, it'll be in quadrant four, and that leaves us with a special triangle. Okay, this is 330 degrees. The special triangle, which is our reference angle, will be a 30 degree triangle. Okay, on the x-axis, we're going to have root three over two, and on the y-axis, we're going to have negative one over two. In a unit circle, your hypotenuse will always be one. So what are the trig ratios for this? Sine 330 degrees, that's going to be equal to the y value, so negative one half. Okay, on the unit circle it's opposite over hypotenuse, but because hypotenuse is always one, then we end up with negative one over two, just the y coordinate. Okay, now cosine 330 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, so root three over two over one. Okay. But because it's over 1, we're just taking the x-coordinate. So root 3 over 2. Then we have tan. Tan 330. That's opposite over adjacent. So we're going to have negative 1 half over root 3 over 2. Anytime we have the same denominator in the numerator as we do denominator, those cancel out. You can multiply by the reciprocal to figure that out or you just memorize that that's what happens. So we're left with negative one over root three. We will need to rationalize, so multiply by root three over root three. And we end up with negative root three over three. So we have sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, but there's six trig ratios. The reciprocal to sine is cosine. Sorry, cosecant, okay? And I always remember that it's the opposite beginning letter. Okay, for sine we have cosecant, and for cosine we have secant. So if it's a reciprocal of sine, then for cosecant, then we just take 2 over negative 1, or negative 2. Just to show you it's a reciprocal of, I'll put negative 2 over 1, then simplify it to negative 2. Secant 330 is a reciprocal to cosine 330. We started with root 3 over 2, so the reciprocal would be 2 over root 3. Can't have a radical in the denominator, so we're going to rationalize and end up with 2 root 3 over 3. Okay, and lastly, the reciprocal to tan is cotan. Okay, so cotangent 330 will be equal to, if we go back here, we had negative 1 over root 3. Let's just take the reciprocal of that. So then we end up with negative root 3 over 1, and we don't really need that one. It's just equal to negative root 3. So this specific example, we looked at the special triangle of 30 degrees. Okay, looking at it in quadrant one, okay, we have on the x-axis root three over two, on the y-axis one over two. We also looked at special triangle 45 degrees. Unit circle, radius is one, the y value will be root two over two, the x value will be root two over two. It's the exact same. And don't forget these are right angle triangles. Okay. And third special triangle was the 60 degree triangle on the x-axis, 1 over 2, y-axis, root 3 over 2, and hypotenuse is 1. 
<coughs> if you can memorize these special triangles, it's going to come in handy because you can apply them in all four quadrants and essentially create the unit circle. Other types of questions we looked at were arc length questions. Okay, one thing that's very important is the angle of the arc length always has to be in the radian measure. So if we have to determine the length of an arc that subtends an angle of pi over 5 at the center of a circle with radius 7 centimeters, we would solve this by using the arc formula. So arc length equals the radius times the angle on that arc. Let's write out what we know. We don't know our, uh, our A value, that's unknown. Our radius is 7, and the angle is pi over 5. So just to give you a little picture here, okay, radius of 7, arc angle of pi over 5, and this arc length here is our unknown. Now just to, again, if this measure is given in degrees, you have to convert it to radians, okay? So theta must be in radians. Very important. Okay, we'll just sub in what we know and then solve. Radius is 7, angles pi over 5. So our arc length will be 7 pi over 5, which works out to be 4.4 centimeters. And if you have to solve for one of the unknowns on the right-hand side, then you just rearrange the equation. So we just talked about what if the angle was given in degrees. Well, how would I convert that to radians? That's below. So let's say our angle was given as 310 degrees. To convert that to a radian measure, we would have to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So in terms of pi, that works out to be 31 pi over 18. But if we didn't want it in terms of pi, we have to multiply the pi into 31 over 18. And that works out to be 5.4 radians. 31 pi over 18 is a radian. 5.4 is the radian. Okay, This one's just in terms of pi, and this one's to the nearest tenth. Okay, we can also go backwards going from radians to degrees. In order to do that, we need to multiply by 180 divided by pi. Okay, and this we actually need to multiply by 180 over pi. When you do that, you get 91.7 degrees, or to the nearest degree, 92 degrees. We also looked at graphing trig ratios, or sorry, trig graphs, and we looked at graphing specifically the graph of sine, the graph of cosine, and the graph of tan. Okay, just a quick review, if we were to look at the graph of sine, we would start at the origin, we would go up to its max, down to its min, and back to the halfway line. Okay, its max will always be at 1, and its minimum will be at negative 1. Its halfway point is at pi, and it finishes its interval or period at 2 pi. So the period for sine is 2 pi. Okay, it reaches its max at pi over 2, and it reaches its min at 3 pi over 2. So that's the basic graph of sine. All right, next up, I'm just going to review the graph of cosine. So cosine x. Okay, it always starts at its max of 1. Go through its halfway to its min, back up, and finishes its cycle. Okay, its minimum is at negative 1, and it finishes its cycle at 2 pi. It reaches its minimum at pi and it crosses the x-axis at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. That's the base graph of cosine. Alright, and
And the last graph was the graph of tan x. You can be putting this in your calculator if you'd like. But this is the general graph of tan. Okay, it crosses through at 0, and then again at 180, okay, and then again at 360. Where are the vertical asymptotes? Well, they're at 90 degrees, and then every 180 degrees later. So tan does not exist at 90, 270, and then 180 later, 180 later, 180 later. So why is it important to understand these base graphs? Well, when we want to figure out the transformations, we need to know where did they start. So in this graph here, we're comparing the graph of y equals 2 sine 3 times x minus pi over 3, all minus 1, to the graph of y equals sine x. So thinking about the parameters a, b, c, and d, we can describe the amplitude, the period, the horizontal stretch factor, the horizontal phase shift, and the vertical displacement.